Hello, so previously we already created an application where users can create an account, they can create posts, they can uh, look at posts, they can update posts and so on. And uh, we also created API tokens, so a user can generate an API token and using the API token he can make uh, HTTP requests uh, with the bare authentication to access his own posts, to update, destroy or... Uh, view his own posts. So, for example, I just created this API token. I would go to, uh, yeah, I've got some example API requests here. I would, uh, for example, uh, paste this token. I would make a, a HTTP request. So you see here, I've got another window. I make a request here and you see the server response. And here I have a list of all the posts created by my user that identifies by this API token. Okay, so we've got uh, our application, we've got our API routes, but uh, how can end users, how can API consumers know that we have this API and how know how they can use our API? Well, a very important thing, actually the most important thing when building an API is uh, having good API documentation so that the API consumers and users software developers can actually use the API of your application and know how to do it. So there are... Well, there are different ways of you, uh, how you can document your API, but I think the most popular one is the Open API standard. So there is this uh, GitHub library with all this specification, and uh, it's basically uh, a VML file that you can structure in uh, the right way, and uh, many different clients will be able to read your API. So this Open API uh, specification was initially created by a company named Fager, as I understand, and uh, here is an example of an API that uses this uh, Open API VML uh, manifest file. So here you see is just an example of uh, an uh, Open API where we have different uh, uh, objects, and you can do different actions. You can have a look uh, at uh, well different specifications. It is just a UI that consumes this uh, JSON file. If we click the JSON file, it is the API uh, documentation itself. So you see, it uh, is uh, just a file that uh, has all the information about all the API endpoints. And here is, for example, the uh, API of uh, Etsy. So you see, Etsy is using Open API version 3. And uh, here is the manifest. And uh, you could uh, also basically just copy the manifest uh, into your application and play around with it. Uh, also, uh, going to the Swagger website that has, uh, I think, all the best resources about uh, Open a API. Uh, I guess Swagger and Open API used to actually be the same thing uh, before. Uh, so uh, there is an editor where you can uh, play around with uh, an example API, or let's say we can even copy all this uh, Etsy API, paste it instead of this. And you see we have all the Etsy API endpoints that we can play around uh, with. Of course, we would need the Etsy API key and client ID and secret to be using this. So we would need to actually go to the Etsy API and get these values to be able to make uh, actual requests from this API. Okay, and uh, another great resource I've seen while making the research for this video is this uh, Ruby K presentation from 2019 where uh, there is a good explanation of how Open API works. But anyway, we've got uh, our Rails application and uh, we've got our API uh, endpoints and we want to add some kind of uh, documentation. So we are going to use uh, Open API uh, as the manifest and uh, Swagger as the UI for our API. So uh, to do this, we are going to use the gem OSFAG. So uh, the idea of OSFAG is that uh, you can uh, have this kind of a uh, Swagger UI, you can make uh, API requests, and you can automatically generate uh, your uh, manifest file if you're using our spec. So uh, you would be able to write specs in uh, a specific uh, uh, DSL, so like there's a specific domain-specific language uh, for writing specs uh, based on which you would be able to test your API and also generate the API documentation. But for the purposes of this video, we are not going to write the uh, OSPEC tests. We are only going to use the OSPEC API and UI, and we are going to create an, uh, a manifest file uh, on our own. 
So let's start by adding these two gems into our Rails application. Go into the gem file. I'm going to add the Osweg API and Osweg UI. Now uh, I'm running bundle. I will say rail generate Osweg install. It is going to create the, uh, okay. I need to run, could not find generator Osweg install. Uh, let me try once again. I'll stop the server. Okay, yeah, because I need to run, uh, I didn't install uh, just gem Osweg. I installed these two gems. So I need to run these two commands separately. So generated uh, two files and also added a couple of roots. Let's have a look. So in our roots, now we have these uh, roots to slash API docs. And also it generated two initializers, Osweg API and uh, Osweg UI. So uh, we've got the root slash API docs. Let's start the server and try going to this root, Rails server. Go into slash API docs. And you say, see it says fail to load API definition. So uh, we need to actually create a VML file that will store our uh, API. So let's do it. And the correct path would be, so uh, it's not very intuitive, but uh, it should be, if we have swagger here, then it should be slash swagger, then uh, slash version one and uh, the name of the file. So let's go to our root and we will create a new uh, folder, let's call it Swagger. Okay, I already did create a folder named Swagger. Uh, yeah, so I created Swagger version 1 and inside I will have a file. In this case, it is Swagger. Let's try doing so Swagger.yaml. Uh, and inside I will write a very basic header for the Open API specification. I will say Open API uh, version 303 uh, info. I will have title, super rails, API. And uh, let's uh, see if this works now. I will refresh and you see, we have our basic API displayed. So uh, yeah, we can uh, already keep working from here. Now, uh, next thing I would like to do is actually customize this UI and uh, make the branding look as we would want it to be in our own application. So uh, actually I myself contributed the uh, uh, to the Osweg documentation. And uh, I added these docs for customizing the UI, uh, improve them a bit. So uh, let's uh, generate uh, this uh, uh, Osweg UI file, the one that manages this uh, content that is being generated. And let's have a look at it. So we're going to use Osweg UI home index. So this is the file, the layout file that manages this, uh, well, everything that is rendered here. So let's change uh, the title to be our application's name and API, for example, super rails API. Refreshing, you see, and the name is updated. Okay, now most of the content that is here, you wouldn't want to change anything, otherwise it won't render correctly. But what we can do is change the favicon and uh, the brand image. So uh, to do this, I would uh, go to the public folder and here I would add a couple of images that I've already got prepared. So the favicon and uh, a brand image. I will copy them into the public folder. And uh, here I will uh, use, so not, I will remove the dot here. Uh, I'll remove the dot here. And let's see if uh, this has been updated. Yeah, so here we've got our favicon, looks good. And uh, to update this, I will need actually some uh, JavaScript. So I'm going to copy this code and I'm going to put it next to all the other scripts here. Okay, and uh, in this case, in the example, we have favicon and I have favicon long.png. Now let me refresh our application. Okay, so yes, now the application is using our own uh, branding, but uh, we need to actually generate some API endpoints. So uh, a simple and funny way that I found uh, to do it is uh, using uh, ChatGPT. So here is the prompt that I wrote that I've got uh, 
API with better authentication. Uh, this is an example of uh, getting the slash post.json and uh, a better token example. And I asked it to generate uh, open API documentation. And here is what it generated for me. So let's uh, have a look uh, if it actually works. I will copy the code. I will uh, put it here. And let's see if it works. So going back. Okay, unable to render definition. Um, yeah, so you see, it doesn't work out of the box. There might have been some uh, error. You see, ChatGPT isn't uh, perfect. So uh, let's have a look what we can do with this. Actually, what I think, uh, I'm not sure that version 3.1.0 actually exists. And in the previous example, I uh, used 3.0.3. So this got rendered. Maybe just 3.1.0 doesn't exist yet. Let me try once again. So I will copy the code, it doesn't render, and uh, looks like the version isn't valid, so I will try 3.0.3. .3. And it seems to be rendering. Okay, so yeah, here we've got our posts. Let's have a look at the post model. You see in the post we've got ID, title, description, and user ID. And uh, you see post create is uh, kind of rendered differently because in post create we cannot pass uh, the ID, cannot pass uh, the user ID because they are set uh, automatically. So let's have a look at our posts. We've got this get, we've got the successful response, the uh, an error example. Uh, so yeah, for one would be like authentication credentials were missing. So let's try making a request. I will like try it out, execute. So uh, you see it made this call request and uh, we can try having a look in our console. So uh, Will anything actually change? Let's try making the request, execute. You see, a request does happen. And we get the message, uh, unauthorized bad credentials. Okay, let's uh, try actually passing in the right credentials. So we're going to use the authorization. Now, how does it know that we use authorization? Because here in the specifications, we say that uh, we are using bearer authentication. So for the get path, for the post path, and uh, in the general security. So we've got bearer authentication that uses HTTP bearer JWT token. Okay, so let's use a, a real token. I will go back to our application. I will generate an IPI token for our current user. I will uh, go back here. I will click authorize. So authorize, okay, close. Let me try making a request once again. And you see, I got all the posts that belong to the current user, the owner of this API token. So the request was successful. Let me try making another request. So we've got post. I can try to create a post via our API. So I will click try it out. And here I have an example of a payload that I can send. So a title uh, created with API, a description. Okay, let me try executing. And uh, what do we have? So we made the request, we have uh, a response body, and it seems to have been successful because the response is 201, and 201 says that the, well, the post has been created. Let's try getting all the posts once again and see if uh, it was uh, successful. I will click execute. I will see, yeah, so we have a, uh, post with title created via API. Body is null for some reason. Let's see why. Yeah, because uh, what do we have in our schema? We have uh, body. And here we pass the description parameter because maybe to open API, I made uh, I told that the post has description or something. No, I didn't tell anything. It is just something that the open API assumed. So do we have description? Um, Let's see. So it says the post has uh, a description, but uh, realistically a post has body. So I will just change it to body here and here. So yeah, previously I made a request sending the post description, but not post body. Let's try once again, I'll refresh. I will have a look at our post record. Yeah, now we send a body. So I will authorize once again. I have to reauthorize because I refresh the page authorize now i will go to posts and uh, i will click uh, 
versus this execute thing. Uh, yeah, try it out. So body, let's click execute. Okay, I will go to the list of posts, try it out, execute. And the last post that was created, yeah, it has both a title and the body. So uh, you see, I provided not all the information that I need to open API and it just made a few assumptions. And uh, of course I had to tailor my uh, generated document uh, a bit. So it uh, is a good tool, but it doesn't uh, give all the right answers if you don't uh, provide the whole description that you want. So yeah, we've got a good skeleton for our API. We can change it as much as we want. And uh, also we can uh, really add uh, other requests. Like by default, uh, it was given get all posts, uh, create one post. So yeah, we've got get, we've got post. And the same way we can create uh, API endpoints for updating and destroying records. But I will leave it up to you to do it on your own. You can also use ChatGPT or whatever tool you want. So yeah, that's uh, I guess about it for this episode. We've uh, installed Oswag UI and API. We have uh, uh, used ChatGPT to and some prompts to generate this uh, Swagger documentation. We have updated it a bit so that it is more like our application. And uh, we have customized the UI so that uh, it looks uh, good with our own branding. So yeah, that's it for this episode. Thanks for being with me and see you in the next one.